It was 10 years ago when her son was diagnosed as HIV positive that she too found out that she was infected with the virus. My guest today will not reveal her face, but she wants to share her experience to help all of us to stay safe and to make better decisions in the relationships that we form. I will call her Althea, which is not her real name. Hi, Althea. How are you doing? Hi. Good afternoon. You're good? Yeah, I'm good. All right. Welcome to the show. You. Why do you think that it is important to you now, today, in this moment, to share your story with, with me, the world, on this show? Um, it's not the end of the world, mm -hmm. right? You can live as long as you want. Just, just take in the meds and eat healthy. Right. All right. So, all right. Take me now to the time when you saw your son sick. Yeah. Yeah. And you went to the doctor. Take me to that full experience. Uh, what happened? Well, there at home, um, I was breastfeeding. Um, when I went to the clinic, they do um, a test. Um, that it wasn't showing up in my blood, so they said, okay, I can breastfeed when I was at the hospital when I got him. Okay, and that day, keep on breastfeeding him, didn't know that I was HIV positive. I was at home there when my son started getting sick and some bumps and some stuff were coming out on his skin. I was saying, what's wrong now? Mm -hmm. So I rushed him to the hospital. How old was your son now? Well, actually, he was going one year old, mm -hmm. right? And uh, when, uh, when I rushed him to the, the Boston Mount Hospital for children, um, there, they, when they do some tests on him and some tests, there I found out that he was HIV positive. Wow. Right. That, that day when the doctors told you that out there, what was your reaction? What was going through your mind? No. Well, actually, I was lost. I was saying, what? But I was saying that, oh, well, when I went to the doctor, they didn't tell me that I attracted the virus. Mm -hmm. So, how comes my son have it? So, dear, no, I was crying when I found out my son was HIV positive. I started crying, I started crying. Call my mommy same time, tell my mommy. Dear, my mommy was saying, like, what? When I reached home, they was admitted in the hospital for a couple of months. It was a struggle for me. Um, there, I called his father at the same time and told him. And I said, how did he even tell me that you were HIV positive? Well, well, I can know what to do. He was saying that he didn't know and stuff like that. and. Well, I said, okay, the baby's in the hospital, he's sick, so he attracted the virus. So there now was their so you, crying. So, so you contracted, the, well, of course, you contracted the virus through you Who as mean? well. So, Breastfeeding didn't know that I was HIV positive because when I did the test, the result wasn't showing in my blood. Right, right. right. So your partner, um, was was he being truthful that he wasn't aware that he had the virus? No, I didn't know that at that time. Right? People were talking, but I didn't believe. And I told him that my son was HIV positive. He was like, oh, comes and stuff. But later on on that, he sit down with me, talk to me. What you spoke about? What did he say to you? He told me how he contracted by a person, by, a, by, by his first girlfriend, that she didn't tell him that she was HIV positive, so he attracted to me. Mm, wow. That evening when you went home, your, your son is in the hospital admitted. Right. You're now alone at home. What was that night? What was that evening like for you? How difficult it was for you? Did you even sleep? Take me to, um, to that evening. Cannot sleep. I was down in the bed all night, wondering what happened to my son, what going to happen to him, and stuff like that. Everything just running through my head, mm -hmm. right? So I was there. My mother was talking to me. I said to take it easy and. 
So that's where taking a deep breath there and just start. Did you start to blame yourself and did you even understand the virus? <laughs> <laughs> Those times um I didn't know. I didn't know about HIV. Mm -hmm. Right. You weren't informed about it. No, I wasn't informed. Mm -hmm. Now, the days after that, and no, when you began to, to learn about it, what are some of the things that you were finding out and, and um, what were some of the things that started to happen to you, health-wise? Well, for me being um, HIV positive. Um, positive, right. Well, when I go to the doctor and find out that I was attracted to, I said, okay, going to the doctor, getting my checks up, um, taking my meds, um, that's where they start put me on treatment, that the ARVs, mm -hmm. yeah, they start put me on ARVs so that it can, that I can be stay healthy. They told me I went to counseling, I went to a social worker, nurses, doctors, they counsel me, teach me how to take my meds, take it on time. Right, and they told me it's not the end of the world because you can live as long as you want as a normal person. All right, so we take a break. When we come back, we talk more with Althea about when she started to share her story with co workers and friends. Ten years ago, Althea discovered that she was infected with HIV AIDS through her partner, and at that time, Althea. Um, did you blame him? Actually, I blame him at first. I blame him at first. But when I go there, I, when I start get counseling, that's where I feel better. When, when but at first I was blaming him. Yeah. yeah. Um, was he sorry about it? Well, actually, yes, he was sorry, mm -hmm. and he said that he sorry didn't tell me. Right, um, so there we were, went along there, went to one time and said, okay, we can't take this no more, so, yeah. You yeah, end so, the relationship. Right. Mm. So I moved back, went back to my parents' house, and from there, um, my mommy and every family, mm. my families, they know, Right. What was that like going back home to to your your family and they know that you now have the virus? So how were you treated at first? Well, actually, at first they did scan me and stuff like that, but no, oh lordy, come like I'm from heaven because I say everybody I say I know the end of the world. Don't take it up by your head or stress out yourself and. Stuff like that, everybody was encouraging me mm -hmm. to take my meds and take it on time, eat properly, never miss a dose. But, but at Every first, day. what was the treatment like in the community? They were scarring me. Yeah, right. When you say scarring, what do you mean? They were like, they don't want nothing to do with me. Every time they swim up on the road, they like them take the they put on the right, them to the left, and then they on the left, them to the right. So they were scarring me, they don't want me to talk to them and stuff like that. What no? What's happening? No, now? oh Lord. Me and them are the bestest friends. <laughs> them encourage me. Them say, Oh, Halta, try not to get back to them again. Try to get me some time. Yeah, so dear I feel comfortable with myself. Mm -hmm. Right. Tell me about your son now. How old is he now? Ten years old. He's ten years old. Tell me about his health. Well, his health, right, he's near to suppressed. Right. I came to the hospital to get his checkups every every month every other month. Right. I make sure that he take his meds on time. Yeah. What was it like at work when you shared your story? Well when I shared my story at first with my boss, it wasn't me really tell them. I went at work, some people come in there and uh, Fire that girl because she have AIDS and she have HIV and nobody now have nothing to do with her. And she said, turn on and said to them, said, no, it's not the end of the world. You can cut, anybody can, uh, can catch it. Mm -hmm. Right? Anybody can catch it. So don't discriminate her and don't discriminate people that live in it. 
She said, my shop wouldn't have more sickness or worse or sickness than her. And, and <laughs> you st you're, you're still in the job? All right, I'm still in the job. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so how are you treated um, by your co-workers who know that you have the virus? Well, they treat me. Oh, good. Good, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so you ended the relationship with the father of your child. Right. Did you get into another relationship or your are currently We're in trying. one? We're trying. I'm trying, right? But it's hard. It's difficult today. Difficult, difficult, very difficult. But I'm trying. Mm -hmm. Right, um, but there, how I feel comfortable, thanks to E for Life, mm -hmm. right? Thanks to JCW Plus, thanks for AHF, thanks for all the groups that was, I was in, right? They support Thank, you there along the way. Right, they support me. I come families. The, when I was in the group, oh Lord, it, I, there's a lot I didn't know about. They teach me a lot. Mm -hmm. How about groups. medication? How do you afford it? How do you get your medication? Well, actually, the medication is free. Great. It's free. From where? Right. It's from the um, any, um, pharmacies, mm -hmm. right? It's free. Free, free, free. Yeah. Right. right. How are you feeling now? I mean, it's 10 years now yeah. since you are HIV positive. How are you feeling now? In this moment that you're still able to carry on life and what are you most thankful for well i'm thankful for life right i still have life still living right so as i'm saying it's not the end of the world right it's not the end of the world so i'm grateful for that thank you grateful so much out that. Here. thank okay. you for your time Okay. It's not the end of the world and you are making good progress. Um, your son is okay. Right. You're both taking your, your medications. Medications, right. You're working and God is still good to you. God is still good to me. All right, thank you for your time. Okay, thank All you. All right, so when we come back, we talk more about HIV and AIDS. Show. No one said is Letitia and Kalilia from the AIDS Healthcare Foundation. Letitia, how are you doing? I'm great, thank you. Kalila. I'm good, <laughs> Welcome thanks. to the show. Now, in a case like Althea's, she contracted um, HIV from her partner, right? How often do you see these cases, um, Kalila? Yeah, very regularly. Mm -hmm. Very regularly. Well, what because, are some of the stories that you're hearing? Well, you know, first it is like, it's a matter of why me, what it is that I had done in the past, you know? And I always try to let them know it's not any retribution or anything like that. The fact that you're having sexual intercourse, you have a chance of being infected with the virus. Well, what is it that we need to do in relationships um, so that, you know, we can lessen our chance of being <laughs> infected with the virus? Well, I am going with the unpopular thing. We no longer date, you know, mm -hmm. we meet persons, we have sex. And then two weeks down the line, our personality clash and we move on. There's no dating. Mm -hmm. There's no getting to know the person. There's no waiting for a period of time. And persons are hardly getting tested. Oh. Well, um, how often should we get um, tested, uh, Leticia? Well, um, so we encourage persons to do a, a, an annual check, right? So that's every year you do a HIV test. Mm -hmm. Now, these tests are free. You can just walk in, you do voluntary counseling and yes, testing. And that's free where? Free. Um, AIDS Healthcare Foundation is one place. Mm -hmm. The Ministry of Health offers free testing as well at all the, most clinics. And there are private, other private organizations that offer these services as well. Uh, what is HIV and what is AIDS? Right. So HIV is actually an acronym for the word human immunodeficiency virus is passed on from sexual contact right unprotected sex and so this is the virus that when someone is infected if they're not treated right if it's not detected and they're not treated then it causes aids mm. right? and, and when it gets to aids what's that level at what is it that we need to know now at right that point? so what you need to know is that once you have you will be exit persons will be exhibiting signs and symptoms right this is a point where um 
we call it opportunistic infections will be taking over the body so you will definitely be sick so if you had any doubt at all this is the time that you should go see a doctor and just confirm what's happening right so hiv is the virus that causes aids mm -hmm. right once it's untreated what are some of the, the things that we can look for um if you're um infected with the virus right. hiv so um basically initially there's absolutely no signs and symptoms yeah. right after um say three months persons may have a flu-like symptoms that will go away so we have persons living with the virus for years undetected and that is why we encourage persons just do an annual check, especially if you're having unprotected sex. Just do your annual HIV test. Mm. Mm -hmm. No, the, 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 the person that you have seen here as a social worker, the person that you, you have been seeing over the years, where are they from? Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, where are they from? Um, is it everybody uh, from all walks of life? Help us to understand. Exactly. Remember when I was saying that, you know, once it is that you're having sex, mm -hmm. it's a virus. It doesn't care if you're uptown, downtown, around town. Once it is that you're having sex, you stand a chance of being infected with the virus. Well, well, what is it that you want um, people to know um, as a social worker, especially when um, they learn that they now have um, the virus? What is it that we can begin to do? Um, and, and to live a prosperous life? Um, first and foremost, it's not a death sentence. Persons that have been living with it for years, I mean years, 20 years, 30 years, and they're looking good. The key factor is taking your medication consistently. Consistently means every day and at the time that you choose to take it. What happens um, to, how do we now take care of our mental health um, during that time? Mental health is a serious issue with persons who have the virus. So say for instance, yes, they're sick, but then with the rumors that are out there, yeah. they, are, they are afraid. So they don't have persons to sit down and talk to, like how oh, it is that they're feeling, what it is that they're experiencing and they tend to internalize, and that can be damaging. What can they do um, to, to help themselves? Um, for one, the social workers are here, right? And for two, they need to disclose to someone that they trust and that they can speak with without judgment right. or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the, the diet changes or lifestyle changes that are now required um, if you have the virus? or if you know of AIDS? Right, so once you're diagnosed with HIV, um, our protocols now is that once you're positive, you start medication, you start treatment right away, mm -hmm. right? So the antiretrovirals are readily available. Um, so you have right now, so once you're positive, it's just uh, you, you go through a series of counseling with the social worker, the psychologist, if needs be, the nurses, the doctors are there to encourage you. So we do an, an assessment to see how ready you are, right? We identify the barriers and then we work with you. So one of the main changes is that you have to know that no, I will be required to take a tablet for the rest, every day for the rest of my life, right? In terms of dietary, persons, you know, your body needs this the, the ad, additional nutrition to help to fight this infection as well and so we encourage persons you know you have to ensure that you eat at least three square meals per day if if they you know sometimes have issues with persons finding meals so we say at least once a day you have to eat something that is so adequate we offer um so nutritional support yes. for persons mm -hmm. who are uh, unable to find uh, you know meals and so in terms of you know your diet we encourage you we persons um are actually given vitamins uh, to just to help to boost the immune system and um to, uh, touch back on the mental health aspect of it so we do offer counseling 
and just to ensure that we work with you as best as possible just to keep you at optimal health. We know that this is an additional burden. This is something that you have to live with for the rest of your life. However, HIV cannot be cured, but it can be treated. And we've seen where treatment is very effective. You know, gone are the days when somebody has is infected with HIV there wasn't much work, I mean, research and, and evidence um, surrounding the medications and how far they can actually, how long, you know, they're can actually live. able to live and yeah. what quality of life. You now, we've seen with uh, numerous researches and, you know, just new evidence-based practice that persons are actually living longer. Uh, we encourage persons to keep their appointments because that is how we're going to know that the medications are actually working. We do um, a series of blood tests Good. when they're diagnosed. We follow them up at six months. And then if they're stable, then we follow them up annually just to ensure that th that medication is not um, failing their, their liver or their kidneys because, you know, medications are drugs. Yeah. They are toxins. And so we have to monitor them carefully. So we encourage persons, you know, as somebody would say, it's not a de death sentence. Persons have been living with HIV for years and you just have to, you know, come to care, access the treatment, ac access the um, su support system that we have and whatever it is you're going through, just let us let your healthcare provider know mm -hmm. so that we can assist you as best as possible. Great. For you, Kalilia, what are your words of encouragement um, to, the, to the, um, the persons living with HIV and or AIDS and to their families? Um, to come together and to work together. I mean, it's not something that is passed on via, via touch. You know, so continue to love and support each other. And when there's difficulty, come to your health provider and we help to assist you there. All right, thank you very much ladies for, for sharing with us today. <laughs> All right, so I wanna thank um, Kalilia, I wanna thank Leticia and Althea for sharing with us today on the Alric Show. So remember, support your friend, support your families. In this time, all they need is some good love. All right? I'm Alric McKenzie. The Alric Show will be back next week.